Oh. Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the Crew Alexandra Youth Squad Legends series. Now this episode is going to be quite a short one. We're only going to play two games and that'll be Luton Town and Portsmouth on screen right now. And then I've got just over a week in January to run some admin on the series, which is always lovely. I'll talk about what the admin is at the end of the episode, but for now we've got to play some games. Crew Alexandra against Luton Town. Every single time I start an episode, my battery's low. Corner kick Luton Town early on in the game. That should be dealt with. Theo Stucky takes it away. And here is Tade Tradino. Tradino will float this in. It's dangerous. What a save. Vezaga ran all the way from defence to attack to only see his effort blocked off by the keeper. Gets the ball in the end. Theo Stucky with the effort that troubles the keeper again. Luton Town are down to 10 men at the moment. One person's out with an injury. Tradina just holds that ball up, not for long, and they are back up to strength, which means that we haven't been able to take advantage. And again, maybe. Second bite of the cherry. Here's Vezaga. Theo Stucky wanting to move into that space, but the pass was played a bit too early. Theo Stucky. Oh, yes. And just put it into the middle. Tradina's there waiting. Easy job there, even for a person as bad as Tradina. I was a little skull shot. I held L2 apparently. Well, that was a nice finish. Fair enough, Tradino. I'm being a bit harsh. I have some exciting, some interesting news about the YSL Extreme Rules. They have finally been complete. They are on Reddit. I did say at the start of this series that I was going to be making a video, but I feel like they are so hard that there's not going to be that many people who are interested in doing this kind of series. If you are one of the people, you have got that text post that I did on Reddit, and it's well detailed, so you should be able to go from there. Maybe if this series is an absolute success, I will think about making a video, because obviously more people will be interested once we show, fully show, that the rules work. That's offside. Come on, show the flag. Great save, Pascal Muller. It doesn't matter if he was offside. That's still a brilliant save. Davis, lovely pass. It's Theo Stucky. It's 2-0. Players to the left of him. Players to the right. He's our man. Stucky in the middle for Crew. Player on the sidelines for Crew. Let's hope that, that is not serious. That he's back on the field. He's up and running, which is a great sign. Theo Stucky to take this from 31 yards. Testing the key pot. Stings the gloves. In goes the corner kick. Oh! Malachius Jr. took it off Stucky, who was in a way better position. Stucky turns. He's having a great game. It's in again. Players to the left of him. Players to the right. He's our man Stucky in the middle for crew. We're leading 3-0. Where did this come from? I can only think that they've changed the difficulty yet again. How have they made it easier? That's the sad thing. Why is this easier? Please don't say that I need to be messing around with the sliders again. Ugh. Stucky's in for a hat-trick here. Theo Stucky. No. Maybe. I'm gonna do the fake shot. Run inside. And he's just forced off the ball. That is full time. 3-0 to crew. How about that? George Cooper is off. He's going to Morecambe for £140,000. Malcolm Taylor has suffered a sprained ankle and will be out for three weeks. Alright, we don't have that many games within the next three weeks, so we should be able to deal with that. Daniel Udo is going to Longford Town. That's £140,000. That's actually his valuation. Quite a nice deal there. And then there's Perry Ng. Shush, baby. You're going nowhere. You stay right where you are, baby. In comes McNeil, 44 overall central defensive midfielder. He'll be playing centre back this game. Let's hope he does all right on his debut. Yeah, yeah, Fathom Park. I'd like to see more lower league stadiums being put into the game. But then again, should I complain? There's so many English stadiums now. I really shouldn't complain. Oh, 
Well, that was a great start. Deflected into the path of the goal scorer, Bennett. Portsmouth are up 1-0 in the first three minutes. Portsmouth are in third, 47 points. Only five points away from that top spot. So this, unfortunately, is going to be a little reality check. 2-0 Portsmouth. And I definitely need a drink. Oh. oh. Yes, yes, that, that's my normal voice. There it is. Hello, normal voice. Hi there. Like, it's quite early in this game, but let's say we are going to lose it. If you think about it, it's been ages since we lost the match, which is absolutely brilliant. And it's not like we've just been picking up draws. We've got two wins on the board. I have pointed out in the last couple of episodes that, unfortunately, we will have... Have we got another injury? Oh, come on, Vezargop. That's poor. So I've made my own formula up for whether or not we sell a player. Go on, DaCosta. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. There's Tradino. DaCosta, Tradino, partnership, link up. Two goals now in the two games. Am I ever going to finish what I actually meant to say? We've already had three goals in the game. And DaCosta is really shining at the moment. I knew he was a bright spark. There's a corner. Let's go. This is it. This is it. Are we going to equalise? Oh, what a save. Malachias Jr. nearly got a goal and an equaliser for crew. So the formula that I've made that answers the question whether or not we're able to keep a player even though there's an offer on the table for him. It's pretty complex. And for that reason, I will not be showing it you when we get an offer for one of our players. I will just tell you if the board has said, look, we need to sell this player, or if the board has said, no, we can keep this player, we don't need to sell him. I put the Extreme Rules text post in the... 3-1. So I will have the Reddit post in the description. You'll be able to see the formula for yourself. But it ties into the contract of the player. That hopefully will make the series more realistic because there'll actually be... A higher chance of us keeping a player if we sign him on a big contract. I'm giving myself this season to get everything sorted. None of my generator players will be sold right now. But when it comes to May, we're going to have to really consider putting Stucky Moolah on massive contracts. If we haven't got any luck, they'll still be sold. But it does increase the odds of us keeping them. Full time. Portsmouth look like the real deal. One of the better sides that I've played this season. And you'd expect that from someone so high up in the table. So, the games are now finished. Many of you have been talking about potential boosting. Even though the rules of this series are very strict, I still think potential boosting is a fantastic way to reward the players who have been doing very well for you. The last time we did this, a player like Theo Stuckey would go from at the club since 2016 to showing great potential, which I used to say was up on stage because the status would eventually change. I've learned a lot more about potential boosting in the last year, and now I know how to boost the player without seeing a status on the player. It's just all about valuation. If the valuation of the player goes up once you recall them back from loan, then their potential has gone up as well. So if we do that and actually upgrade it by one stage instead of many stages to get to showing great potential, then it is certainly a more realistic boost. And if he keeps on performing, then eventually he will have a status alongside his name. If sadly we need to sell Theo Stucky at one stage, then there is a possibility that we'll see him again in the future. Maybe not playing for us, but if we keep on boosting his potential, if he keeps on performing for crew, then obviously he's going to get picked up by quite a decent side. Now to make sure we don't go mad on this like we did on the Burton Albion series, every player has a limit of one boost per season. For every player that you boost in potential, you must take away the potential of someone else. We are going to be boosting Theo Stuckey, and linked onto that, we have to drop the potential of Martin Rangelov. That means that we're making the potentials quite dynamic because Martin Rangelov has been really poor, like very poor, inserting misery into my life, poor. So far I've picked out four players that could get themselves a potential boost. We've just said Theo Stuckey, DaCosta's been really good, Malachius Jr, he's excellent, and also Owen Thomas. I would put Pascal Muller into that, 
But he's, he's pretty good anyway. I mean, he has got the highest potential of them all. From now until the end of the season, everybody is going to be looked at extremely closely. And if a player makes one mistake, their potential is going down. And that, everybody, is the reason why I have to stop it here so I can make changes to this save accordingly. This has been Cutsy. Thank you for watching this episode of Youth Squad Legends. If you've enjoyed it, please give the video a like. And I will see you next time.